Do you have a super chewer? The kind of chewer that's like a canine blender. You know, a dog that destroys just about everything. Short of giving your dog a tire, which we don't recommend due to the chemicals and the petroleum, you're probably wondering what you can give your dog that's gonna last. I'm here to help. I too have a super chewer. I'm looking at you, Harper. <laughs> so I've actually gone through quite a few different toys and treats before I landed on five that I love for most super chewers. After all, there are going to be some dogs that no matter what you give them, they're gonna destroy it in record time. So they may need supervision when chewing toys that can be destroyed. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog. about super chewer toys that I love, let me give you a few items to avoid, or at the very least, use with caution. Now, if you just wanna hear about the five toys I recommend and skip the whole safety info, you can jump to the middle of the video. Definitely stick around for the ending though when I'm going to assign just a little bit of homework. But I do recommend that you hear me out so that you don't give your dog something that can make them sick or worse. All right, if you've tuned into this video, you've probably already tried maybe the Black Super Calm. That's really made for tough chewers. That one is pretty good, but even my own powerhouse chewers have managed to destroy those after only a few chomp sessions. Now, the other five options I recommend in this video might be even better options for you and your pup. Now, before I tell you about the super chewer toys that I love, let me give you a few items to avoid or use with caution at least. Raw hides are on the nope, nope, and nobody nope list. Forever and for all time, do not use raw hides. I've got an alternative to raw hides that I'm gonna tell you about in just a minute. Now, raw hide is actually processed with harsh chemicals, which then makes them that bright white color. They're also very hard on your dog's digestive system and can easily cause a blockage. And another dangerous trait is that these materials can actually expand in your dog's stomach, which could make them very difficult to pass and even require emergency surgery. Another nope, it's a frozen wet washcloth. And I've even seen some vets recommend this for teething puppies. Are they nuts? <laughs> Do they just want to see the dog back again for surgery to remove it when the dog ingests it? Now, I know many dogs love to chew on fabric, like rugs and pillows and bedding and even your clothing, but this is really hazardous and it can be consumed very quickly, possibly resulting in expensive surgery to remove that obstruction. Now, cooked bones are also not a good idea either. They can easily splinter into sharp pieces that could puncture those soft organs. Stuffies or stuffed or plushed animals are also a bad idea. But if you have a super chewer, you probably already know that already. I know, there are so many that are super cute at the pet store. But if you haven't figured this out already, they're gonna be a 10 second toy, gone and destroyed before you barely turn around and walk away. I know, because this would last about 30 seconds here in our home with pickles. I actually have a few toys that are on my maybe list as well. So these are gonna be good options for some dogs, but not all. Now, you really have to know your dog's chew style and what they like to engage with and what really satisfies them. So maybe split antlers are a maybe only because they can be pretty hard on a young puppy's teeth. Now the split part is important because there's a soft part in the middle that is really tasty to many pups. So different antlers you could use would be deer, elk, or even moose. Now adult dogs might find the regular antlers, not split, to be okay, but again, it's gonna depend on your dog. Some vets don't recommend antlers because they can be hard on the teeth, and if your dog is an aggressive chewer, it can actually break their teeth. Now, other dogs chew moderately, and they have no problem at all. Bully sticks are also a maybe for me. Now, in my household, we have some pups with sensitive stomachs and bully sticks. Well, they're gonna create quite the consequence, if you know what I mean. I used to let my dogs have them for about 10 to 20 minutes. I'll admit, the dogs absolutely loved them. But after cleaning up runny poo for about two days and dealing with the smell of the bully stick and the puppy gas, we decided not to buy them anymore. Now your pet might be different, but I encourage you to take it slow at first and watch for any changes in your dog's bathroom habits. And bully sticks can also seem to make my dog's pretty thirsty too, which means then more drinking, which means more potty breaks outside. It's an endless cycle for all 10 minutes with a stinky stick, so I'm gonna pass on that one. So just a side note, if you're having other troubles with potty breaks or poo in the house, make sure to check out this free digital new puppy starter kit. In it, you're gonna find more advice and 
additional videos on potty training. Let's talk for a minute about why dogs chew and destroy. This can actually help you pick out the best toys and products for them. Dogs chew is a part of natural instinct. Now, they chew more during the teething phase, and that's usually between three to six months of age. Now, they're also gonna be losing a lot of teeth at the same time that those adult teeth are coming in. Now, more about that can be found in this video here about biting. Biting and chewing are closely related, so it's a really good idea to watch this video too. Chewing is a self-soothing behavior, much like a baby sucking on a pacifier. Chewing helps a puppy settle after an active play session or some exercise. It can actually help lower their heart rate after an exciting or even a fearful experience, and it can help transition the puppy into a sleep period. Chewing is not something that we want to correct or stop, but we can redirect those sharp razor teeth to something appropriate. Think about a kid who draws on the wall with a sharpie. Yikes, that's definitely not what we want. But we don't want to take away markers and we don't want to prevent them from drawing. We just have to find a better activity or a way that fits into our world. Now that might be something like a washable marker or even a pencil or doing it on a piece of paper. And that's what we're going to do with our puppies in chewing. Redirecting is key. Now, many dogs love to destroy things. Have you ever seen those videos of dogs opening presents or boxes that arrive in the mail? They go crazy. It's hilarious to watch, and if it's done in a safe manner and the dog isn't ingesting the cardboard or paper, it's totally fine. Teaching the dog when and where she can chew will be the job of the human. Now, you definitely don't want her shredding and destroying every box that she comes in contact with. That's gonna get, well, it's gonna get expensive. But noting that she loves to destroy things is something that you can use to your advantage and give her something that she can actually take apart. This might be something like food, like a head of lettuce or celery. It could be a busy box where she has to remove things from it to get the good stuff out of it. Either way, try to find a way to let her destroy those objects safely. Now you might object to buying a toy only for her to destroy it, but think about it as us going to the movies. We pay for an experience for just a few hours. Now, we don't really have anything to show for it when it's over, but we paid for it and we enjoyed it while it was happening. Or even if we buy a book and we read it and then we're done with it. Okay, dogs don't necessarily like movies and they can't read like we can. So sometimes we have to buy things for them to destroy on purpose because that's what they like to do. Just remember to supervise well if you know the item is gonna be destroyed and it's not edible. Now, here are a few things I do let my dogs destroy. Cheap, plush stuffed animals once in a while, supervised of course, busy boxes filled with paper, heads of lettuce to tear apart in the backyard, and in this video, I talk about Bennett bones, Nyla bones, and other toys for some pups. Now, strong chewers might go through these pretty quickly, so definitely test them out first. Many people wonder about the little bits that come off when your dog is chewing on them. Those are normal and they can be ingested, but I do trim my dog's chew toys every few days. And definitely trim them if you see bigger chunks that are about to come off as well. Now, if you're having trouble getting your dog to engage with a chew toy, try to make it more enticing. You can do this by leaving it in a dog food bag overnight. Now you can rub it with something tasty like hot dog or cheese, or you can make it fun by hiding it or throwing it and causing movement. Okay, so now that we've talked about the what not to give your dog to chew on and why dogs chew and some safer things that you can offer, let's talk about my five items for super strong chewers. Number one, indestructible bone. All right, this is my all time favorite chew toy. My dogs love it and it's not harmful, so therefore, I love it too. These bones will not splinter and they're BPA and phthalate free and they're non-toxic. Of course, they eventually do get broken down, like this one here, but it's no problem because the material is not harmful. And the dogs get it in such small doses over time. Believe me, they consume a lot worse things when we go out into the backyard. Now, the link to this here and all the recommendations is in the description below this video. Also, you can use the code DREAMDOG and get 10% off of this item. Number two. This one here is the Monster Canine Ultra Durable Chew Stick. This is another one I love. It's made from an industrial strength natural rubber compound. It's 100% safe with non-toxic materials. And the company that sells these sticks also sells balls and footballs and frisbees too made from the same material. Now, your dog might prefer one shape over the other, so do a little experimenting. Number three, yak chews. 
Instead of offering rawhides, consider yak chews. They're gonna be healthier than rawhides and they're gonna last a lot longer. And many dogs love them. Not only are they easier on the tummy, but they also promote healthy teeth and gums too. Now, this may be one that you only give your pup for maybe about 10 minutes at a time. Now, if your pup consumes these kinds of chews in record time, you're really gonna wanna make sure you monitor interactions. We don't want them eating the whole thing all in one sitting. Number four, Tuffy Stuff toys. All right, these are fun toys that come in a variety of shapes and sizes and are super tough. They're gonna hold up to the strongest chewers. The toy has four layers of material, which are bound and sewn multiple times to make one really tough layer. It floats in water, it's machine washable, and then you can let it air dry. Tuffy toys are not the kind of thing that you should leave your dog alone with, but instead use it as part of your play together. It would be a great one for fetch or even hide and go seek. Number five, the Super Chewer subscription by BarkBox. Now, another great option is to get the subscription service for your Super Chewer. I do have a link in the description below if you wanna try out the subscription service. Now, this Super Chewer box by BarkBox is designed for Super Chewers, and each month you're gonna get new items in it, no more traveling to the store and wasting money on items that are just gonna get torn up in minutes. These toys really last. Now, this box is a great value. For only $29 a month, you can get about $45 worth of treats and toys. Now, that's the price if you choose the 12 month option. There are other monthly and quarterly options or plans to choose from. Dogs really benefit from novelty, so I love the subscription boxes for that reason. Now, it also saves me from having to go to the pet store when it's time for something new and they have a new monthly theme all the time. So it definitely keeps us all laughing and having fun over here. Now, all three of my dogs are pretty serious chewers, with my smallest dog being my most aggressive chewer. Pickles, my Cavalier, can tear through just about anything. So these toys, especially his super chewer box, last us a really long time. Now, all three dogs get a new toy each month. Bark, the company that created both Bark Box and Super Chewer Box, are dog obsessed <laughs> and they want to provide the best products for your dog. Now they've actually been around since 2012. They've designed all of their own toys and they tailor each box to your specific dog. So here's how it actually works. Each month you're going to get a tailored box just for your dog based on the information that you enter such as weight and the shipping is going to be free for all U.S. residents and I think it's about eight dollars for those of you guys living in Canada. Now you can even upgrade to the extra toy club and get a bonus toy in each box as well. The toy club is an extra seven dollars per month at the time of this recording. Now you can click the link below in this video for the links to all of the toys, including the Super Chewer subscription box. All right, before I wrap up today, I wanna to give you guys just a little bit of homework. Homework, you might ask? Yes, because I can sit here and I can tell you guys all the things that you should do all day long. But unless you actually do something and work on the training, nothing's gonna change. So for today's homework, I want you to gather up a few different chew toys that you have for your pup. Take them out of rotation for a few days so that they become a little bit more novel. Then I want you to play a preferences game. So what you're gonna do is line them all up on the floor at one time, and then you're gonna allow your pup to go check them out and react. Does he immediately love one or two? Does he gravitate to one but destroy it in about 60 seconds? Is he interested in the whole lot? This is actually a lot like a taste test that we did recently with our pro level students enrolled in my course. All right, I want you to take some time to really watch your dog's behavior when you present these toys and start to get an idea of what kinds of products your dog loves. This is gonna allow you to use your money wisely and get the things that will be a great fit for your pup. All right, if you record your homework and you share it in my puppy training with Michelle Lennon Facebook group, I'm gonna give you some personalized feedback on what you might try differently or even what canine body language I saw in the video that you might not have noticed. I want you to use hashtag YouTube homework and I'm gonna be sure to tune in and check that out for you. It's like having your own personal trainer, right? <laughs> I hope in today's video, I gave you some great ideas on how to help entertain your super strong chewer. Just remember that chewing is really a normal behavior. Try not to get frustrated with your dog. Now, if he's chewing the wrong thing, well, that's up to the human to manage the environment and give him the appropriate item for chewing, such as, any one of these super chewer items. All right, in the comments below, tell me your dog's favorite chew toys. Maybe your dog's favorite will make it into my next video. Don't forget your homework.